Hello, it's me, uh, back again with some... <laughs> it's these bubbles again. Oi, the bubbles. Someday I'll think of something besides bubbles, but the bubbles kind of works. So I, the last video, I kind of looked at how I could click on the bubbles and um, change their color. And now I just adjusted the code a little bit so I could mouse over the bubbles. And you know, I could show you what I did. I did this in between where I now am using this function called rollover. I, I renamed the click function to rollover. I gave it these arguments and I'm doing the same sort of thing. If the distance is, if it's inside the circle, I turn it white. If it's not, I turn it black. So what I want to do now is I want to click on the bubble and have it pop. I want it to disappear. How do I do that? Well, good news, everybody. <laughs> I kind of did, I did all of that in the last video, except for the whole, um, what did I forget to do? Oh, the deleting from an array. So let's, let's think about that. So, okay, how do, I, how do I remove something? I mean, one, one way I could remove something is just stop drawing it or move it way off screen. And there was a, there were the, in the old days when I had to code with like six feet of snow next to me, um, Sometimes you had to do that because you had this fixed array and you couldn't take things out, you couldn't add things to it, so you would kind of like reuse elements and move them off screen. But here in the land of JavaScript, um, there's a really nice thing you could do. And I'm going to come over here, I'm going to erase this distance thing. <laughs> and now, uh, what do I want to talk about? So I have this array. One of the things that I showed in a previous video, okay, so let's say this array is called bubbles because that's what it's called. <laughs> The whole array, when I'm talking about the whole array, I'm saying the word bubbles. When I am referencing a specific element of the array, I reference it by its index, often within square brackets. And the index numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is bubbles index 2. Now, one of the things I showed in the previous video is that there is a function called push. That function allows me to add something to the end of the array. In fact, there is also a function called pop. And that function allows, what it does is it will take something off the end of the array and pop it off. So if what I wanted to do is always delete the last element of the array, I could use the pop function. Now there are lots of other functions. There's like shift. I think there's even like an unshift. <laughs> I could be crazy. I could just be making that up. Shift men, is there a, no. But here's the thing, where, where do these functions come from? So there's this question that comes up over and over again in, in these videos. And you're probably sitting there asking it to yourself, wait a sec, am I learning JavaScript? I know I'm sort of maybe learning to code, but am I learning JavaScript? Am I learning P5? Is it the same thing? Is it different? Well, it's a, <laughs> this is a complicated question. And I would like, in theory, in my mind's eye, I would like to say that these videos are just about learning to code and think about code and think computationally. I happen to be using the programming language JavaScript. I'm using this library P5.js to make the drawing stuff easier. And it all kind of mixes together. So that kind of larger question aside, this stuff that has to do with an array is not coming from P5.js. If I say ellipse, this is a special function that's in P5.js. What it does is it calls some other functions that are just part of JavaScript without p5.js, but it's, I can only say ellipse because I'm using the p5.js library. These functions don't come from p5.js. They come, they're just part of the JavaScript language. So how do I find out a list of these and how I can use them? Come back over here with me. The place that I like to use is the Mozilla Foundation um, docs. I'm just gonna say Mozilla Foundation J array JavaScript. That's gonna be my Google search and I'm gonna go here. So this is, here's the thing. One of the reasons why I like using P5.js in tutorials is, ah, look, here's the reference. Here's all the stuff. It's kind of like one page of functions. It's actually a lot of stuff, but it, it's kind of self-contained and it's, it has a smaller world view, so to speak. It's like, it's, it's a walled garden, so to speak. This is like the JavaScript documentation. There is so much here. Um, you couldn't possibly, I mean, you could, but it would be, it would take you a long time to read through everything. But here I am, at least on a page that's giving me some information about arrays. And you can see, uh, look, oh, but there's this, what is that? Oh my God. <laughs> Wait, I... It's a for each loop. Someday we'll have to come back and look at that. 
And what does that do and why would you use it? Oh my God, my goodness. Okay, but you can see here, look, pop. Oh, shift. I'm not, oh, I'm not crazy. Shift, unshift. You can see what these functions do. Where are you? You're over there. And look, there's a whole list of them. So let's look through them. Maybe we can find one that removes something from an array. Concat, copy within, entries, every filter, fine. Oh, I got it. Oh, for each. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what was I looking for? Oh, so here's the thing. Ah, splice. I happen to know. Wouldn't it be nice? Could there just be one that's called like delete or remove? But the one that I'm looking for is splice. And this method changes the contents of an array by removing existing elements and or adding elements. It can do a lot of different things. I want to use it for the deletion. So if I come back over here, I want to use this slice function. So can I write up here and you can see it? Yes. Slice. Slice takes two arguments. And there may be other ways to use slice, but for the purpose of this video tutorial, the two arguments are what matters. The first one is an index. And the second one, and I'm kind of moving, sorry, I'm doing that thing where I'm drawing off the whiteboard again. <laughs> Let me go down here. That's a little bit better. The first one is an index. The second one I'll just call how many. So if I say slice index two, how many comma one, what it does is it just takes this element and slices it out, removes it from the array. Let me show you what I mean. So one of the things that I could do to sort of investigate this is I could just use the JavaScript console here in the browser that I'm using to right now. And I could say let um, words equal you know, rainbow and unicorn and kitten. I, was, I tried to think of something else. Turtle? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, paperclip, paperclip. Words dot push paperclip. Okay, so now we can see I have this array with five things in it. And if I were to say words dot splice index three comma one, what should happen here? Zero, one, two, three. I should, ah, look at this. Oops, 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 Charles. So one of the things that's interesting about slice is as it deletes, it kind of like hands it back to you. I'm not gonna use that in this video, but it's kind of interesting that it does that. It's probably too much information here. But if I look at the array words right now, you'll notice turtle is gone. It's just rainbow uniform kitten. So the idea here is that even though I can do a lot with this slice function, if I just want to delete one element from the array, I can say, hey, this particular number, index, just that one. And so that's what I want to do. What I want to do is how can I then, with this code example, click on this and remove it, actually delete it from the array. Well, I know, oh, there's so much here. You know what I should do? Here's the thing. Look at this function rollover. Hmm. There's something kind of interesting about this function, which is that I'm doing two things at once. One thing is that I'm checking to see if, the mount, if that point is inside that bubble, and then I'm also changing its color. And it probably makes more sense for me to have this function be much more generic, for it just to like return true or false, because I might want to reuse this idea as if it's a point over that, um, is a point over that uh, object, that circle, other times. So I'm going to change this to return true, whoops, if, if it's rolling over, return true, otherwise return false. And then I'm going to write a new function called change color. And I'm going to say this dot brightness equals 255. So I wanted to remove the idea of the changing color from here because now I can say if, right, that function, you might not have, you know, I covered return, what return means in my functions video tutorial, but you know, when do I ever need that? Well, now I need it. Uh, what I want to say, Oh, not remove. I'm not removing it. Sorry. Uh, change color. I'm, that's what I'm going to do eventually. Right? I want to say, and, and maybe I shouldn't call it rollover anymore. I should just say contains. Let's call it contains. And I'm going to change it to contains. What I want to do, right, this function is going to return true or false. And I know some of you are saying I could just return this. This statement in itself evaluates true or false. So it's redundant to say, if it's true, return true. If it's false, return false. I could just say, return its value, true or false. I'll let you do that to simplify your own code as an exercise. 
Um, but now what I can do here, this should be exactly the same program. Oh, I have an error. Contains is not a function. Bubble index i contains. Mm, you know what? Is contains something? <gasps> oh boy. Am I not allowed to use the word contains? Record scratch sound, do I have that? <laughs> Hold on a second. Apparently I've done something horrible. Oh, look at this. This whole time. This should say splice. Apologies, this should say splice. 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 Splice is the correct term. So I'm going to change this to contains, which I just did, and that didn't work, but now I'm back because I just didn't save the file. Hmm. Um, and whoops. Oh yeah, no, I do want that page. Uh, and so now, ah, we're back to exactly what I had before. But the point of what I was doing was that now that I've separated out the logic of just checking if a point is in something, I can now in mouse pressed, I'm going to just grab this exact code, and I'm going to add mouse pressed back in. So in mouse pressed, I can check, hey, does the, is the mouse in there? Now this is when the mouse is pressed, check again, and then what do I want to do? Bubbles dot splice i comma one. Look at this, beautiful. Look at this thing of beauty here. I'm able to reuse that idea by saying, okay, just during draw, all the time, check if the mouse is over it. If the mouse is over it, change its color. And I spelled splice wrong. In mouse pressed, when the mouse has been clicked anywhere, check to see if it's in there, if, 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 if you clicked on a particular bubble, and if so, delete it from the array, which should cause it to disappear from the page. And there we go. Now, I've kind of, all oh right, it doesn't, oh, I lost my change back. How did I lose that? Oh, look at that. I forgot. Chain, look, interestingly enough, I had this feature that when it doesn't, and so what I probably should do here is give this an argument. So I had this feature where it, where it, it changes to white when it's over, back to black when it's not. So I should probably give this change color function an argument like bright parameter, bright, and pass that in. I did that kind of quickly, but that fixes that. And then I should be able to just delete all of them. Yay! Yay! Okay, that's basically it. Now, I feel like there's so many things I wanted to do with this. Um, that's not it. I'm missing kind of an important point. And I did cover this. There's a particle system coding challenge which does this, but I, I, I think I should talk about it here, which is something strange just happened which is that I was iterating over the array. I was checking element zero. Then I was checking element two. One, sorry, then I'm checking element two. And at that moment when I checked element two, if that's the one that I clicked on, and I should really call these, I'm gonna call these A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I pretend the particles have a letter, because these index values are gonna change in a weird sort of way. Let me explain this again. I'm checking A, don't delete it. I'm checking B, don't delete it. I'm checking C, delete it. So what happens next? When I delete C, the array all of a sudden looks like this. One, but it's got one fewer element in it, so we don't need this. I'm gonna erase my fingers. And it's got A, B, no C, D, E, F, G. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What was the last bubble I checked? The last bubble I checked was bubble C in index spot 2, right here. So if I is going up by 1, the next thing it should check is index 3. And it, but this is what the array looks like now. So if I check index 3, now I'm going to check and see, should I delete E? What happened? I didn't bother to check D, because as soon as I removed C, D becomes 2, got, moves to index spot 2, and my counter moves up. So I could do something like, if I could add like an I minus minus, so I could say like, oh, if I'm deleting something, like set the index back to go check the next one. Um, there's a bunch of different ways around this. <laughs> Probably if I use that for each loop. <laughs> um, maybe that would help me somehow, but uh, I, but honestly, in this case, it doesn't matter. I, I, you know, if I look at this, like, there's nothing wrong, nothing bad happens. Now, it only, would, it only would be bad if it so happens that I try to delete two of them at once, and the other one that I delete happens to be the next one in the array. So uh, none of these are overlapping right now. <laughs> uh, so let me try to delete both of these. They both deleted, but yeah, I could get bad luck where 
the, I'm hovering over both of these until only this one gets deleted and this one doesn't get checked. So again, I could decrement the index, but another way I could do it is if I'm actually iterating through the array backwards. It doesn't matter if I remove something and the array slides chunks back over, I'm still going towards the beginning. I won't miss any. So you'll see that in a lot of my code examples. Some people like to say I minus minus. I prefer, generally speaking, to, if I'm deleting stuff from the array, to start at the end, which is bubbles dot length minus one, then have my iterator go down minus minus, and then uh, where am I, where do I end? I go all the way down to the first element, which is at index zero. The last element is the length minus one. Like if there are five of them, zero, one, two, three, what? Four? <laughs> if there are five of them, zero, one, two, three, four. So start at five minus one, four, and go all the way down to zero. So let's just make sure that this works. And it does. Still the same exact result. I can delete, I can hover over and delete all of them. So there you go. Um, this is a little video about clicking and removing things from the array. There's some other things or things I could do. I, you know, here's the thing. The, the, the point of me telling you about this going backwards thing is, is more to say that, hey, if you are manipulating an array while you're iterating over it, you should probably be careful. What if, for example, I were adding elements to the array while I'm iterating? Then I could maybe never get to the end. Um, before I finish, I want to add one. I'm, I'm just going to redo this example a little bit just to demonstrate one thing. I'm going to put it back to the version of it which, um, sorry, which had me where I added bubbles whenever I drag the mouse. So I'm going to say mouse dragged. And I'm going to um, just, uh, I'm going to add bubbles at the mouse. And something like, uh, just give them all the same size, just to, for simplicity right now. So what, I, what this should do is give me back to this. I'm kind of drawing with these bubble objects. The reason why I'm showing you this is, this I think might allow you to be a bit more playful in how you think about removing. For example, one thing I could do is um, I could say, just if bubbles.length is greater than, uh, is is greater than uh, 10, bubbles dot splice 0 comma 1. So I'm saying like, hey, only, just only ever have 10 elements in that array. And this, maybe there's, maybe I could use shift there to like remove just the first one. But, and you can see this is, gives me this kind of like snake-like thing. But notice as I let go, each one of these is still an individual object. Now, I, I've lost the clicking on it thing, but I, and I can come back. So there, I think there's some more possibilities. There's almost like a little object that's, uh, like a little thing that's storing its history. And I the reason why I thought of this is I have another video. This is a kind of a hard exercise, but um, something you could think about, what if this were its own object and you had a bunch of these on the screen? So I have another video that, about objects storing their own path um, that, I'll, that I'll link to from this video. Um, and so hopefully now you've got some ideas about how to remove things from an array. Thanks for watching.